The Medfield State Hospital Master Planning Committee has conducted many public outreach uh, activities. We have had open public meetings, we have had surveys, and we have had workshops to try to get a sense of what the community wants to see up at the Medfield State Hospital. So this has played very importantly into the final plan that we will be presenting. Uh, in this video, you're going to see um, Pat Casey talk at the May 24th open meeting where we had tremendous um, we had tremendous attendance about really what the committee has been doing, some of the activities up to that point in May. So in the, in the next clip, you're going to see uh, Gil Rogers and I review what happened at the May 24th public meeting, the two scenarios that were presented to the public, and what feedback we got from the community uh, from that meeting, from that community meeting, which has helped to inform this final plan. So tonight we're in the middle school gym and uh, we've got a bunch of uh, tables set up so it's not looking much like a gym tonight, right? So we've got it set up so that uh, we have, a, have small groups are able to give us uh, feedback on a handful of concepts that we're going to present to them tonight and looking for whether they like those concepts in general and uh, there's a couple of uh, variations on the theme. We'll look for wh what combinations of those uh, two uh, scenarios are uh, most attractive to people and people have the opportunity to uh, bring up other ideas as well. The hospital closed in 2003, the OT3. Uh, and the town bought the property in uh, 2014. The committee got formed shortly thereafter, and we've been going through a number of steps to gather feedback uh, from the town. So we've done a number of, uh, number of open meetings. Uh, we did three big surveys, and then as recently as February, we had a workshop attended by, I think, like 450 people, if I remember correctly that came and looked at four radically different scenarios. So we tried to do, put together what we called the corner cases. So, you know, one extreme was we would eliminate all the buildings and have a big park. Another extreme was very heavy development. Uh, and there were things sort of in the middle and some things were sort of a big bang. We're doing all the development at once. And for others, it was more phased uh, development. So we got some pretty consistent feedback from that meeting and we've narrowed the funnel, uh, so to speak. And uh, the theme was that people are looking for, um, A, for sort of a mixed uh, development, uh, community atmosphere, and a very strong desire to preserve the historical uh, buildings. So all the scenarios that, uh, that had to do with the buildings being, uh, you know, demoed uh, are, are you know, pretty much out the window and uh, we're looking to retain as, you know, as much of the, uh, the original architecture as possible. Talk a little bit about the two options that were presented to the community on May 24th, an open meeting that we had. And Gil is going to go into some of you know, the details of those two options. Um, we had a terrific turnout for that meeting, 250 people approximately, and um, a very active engagement. And um, so we will talk a little bit about what we found out from that meeting and what we've been hearing over the last two years or so. So Gil, why don't you take, uh, take it and talk about the options, the two options that were presented. Let me, uh, thanks Lucille, it's a lot of fun to do this. I mean, we've been at this for what, well over a year, I guess, so right. it's a great chance to kind of catch up and see where we are. Let me just say too about what properties we're talking about, just so every, everyone knows. And uh, we have a little map here that shows that we're focusing in our conversation here about really three main areas. The core campus, which we've called A on this figure, mm -hmm. the Sledding Hill, which is across the street, which we call B, 
and then the Hinckley Farm, which is down near the Senior Center, and then Ice House Road, lot number three, which is next to the Kingsbury Club. And um, so those are the three properties we're primarily talking about. Well, let me just say a little bit uh, about the two scenarios, just to give kind of highlights. Mm -hmm. And we have a picture here that schematically shows what, what they are. Now, scenario one, um, we call town square. <laughs> and town square, because as you see, um, at the north end of the campus, there's a large open space, big park area, public park area. Which it is like three soccer fields. Oh, it's like three, yeah, three so it's really big. Three soccer fields, yeah. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's formed by taking down the food services building, which mm -hmm. is a big building that we don't really fit fits in very well at all. So we're taking that down. Yeah. It's not historical. It's, it's not it's historical. Old, Architecturally, new, it doesn't yeah. fit. It's big. But um, anyway, town square. Then around it, the buildings, which are architecturally very significant, very pretty buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, in scenario one, those would be put into uh, things like apartments, condos, uh, different uh, mixed housing options into that kind of horseshoe that runs around that, uh, that area. And then at the south end, we think that there's so much interest in arts and culture mm -hmm. that the area around uh, Lee Chapel and um, the building next to it, which we call the infirmary, that would be a very logical place for a culture, uh, arts, maybe historic kind of setting in that area. And that would be part of scenario one. Now, one thing that we all feel very important about is what we call the Great Lawn. Mm. <laughs> the big field so when you beautiful. drive in. It. Yeah, mm. where the, I don't know if you went to the car oh, show. Oh, I did, but, I did. It, you know. was, it was fantastic. But we think that should be just left like it is, right? Yeah. Wouldn't change that at all. Maybe Gorgeous. redirect the roads a bit, but other than that, just keep it just like it is. Yeah. You know, it's so pretty. It and, is. And uh, just want to keep it big open space, and it could be used you know, potentially for music events, mm -hmm. maybe a, it's kind of a natural setting for an amphitheater. You know. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it could be just like that. Um, then uh, one of the things that I think we've heard, you know, over and over again is how important open space is to everybody. You know, that's come back in all the surveys and yeah. workshops and stuff that we've had. So in this particular plan, we see a, a number of areas where open space really has opened up. One is kind of on the north-south corridor, all mm -hmm. through it. So you could just see looking all the way, you know, from the sledding hill all through the campus, all the way to the north. Yeah. And that would all be open green space. And then I think the other thing we have to keep in mind too is that the properties outside of this core campus, like, um, there's a big field to the north mm -hmm. as you go toward mm -hmm. the Dover Sherborne uh, Regional School. It's a big open it's field. Gorgeous. Gorgeous Again, field. Again, beautiful, Rolling stunning hills. vista. And then the two big properties on the on the east side and the west side. All of that really, you know, it constitutes probably 200 acres of open space. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of open space that this plan would would have in it, and I think everybody wants that. Now, the pieces on uh, the left and the right of the main campus are state-owned. They're correct. We don't own them, but they're, they can only be used for agriculture. Agriculture, so that's passive, and open space, right. That, and you're including that yep. in, in, yeah. Because I think it's very, part, it's yeah. very much part of the hospital. Right. Um, then uh, one area that um, we're still discussing, really, Mm -hmm. is the area which we call the southeast quadrant, you know. So it's kind of when you come in Stonegate, if you mm -hmm. drive in. And there's some old cottages in that area. And one possibility is for uh, scenario one is to put in cottages, you right. know, small cottages, um, maybe designed for seniors, people willing to, will, interested in downsizing. But there's also beautiful, you know, big mm -hmm. oak trees and uh, maple trees and, other just natural uh, setting in that area that right. we don't want to destroy no. at all. No. So, but that's still kind of what we do with that's one of the options we're, mm -hmm. we're talking about. And then the other um, thing that is on this scenario one is the area to the west 
of the campus. And if you, we call it kind of the outer ring, mm -hmm. you know. Mm, yeah. But we think that that could be an excellent place for senior living. Mm -hmm. You know, senior, maybe it could be assisted living, it could be a CCRC, yeah. could be nursing care, could be memory care, some sort of thing like that that's, that's part of it. Now just to give you an idea of what the actual architectural design looks like, we have a picture here that, that uh, shows the actual buildings and right. actually uh, you know, shows the layout. And you can see the big um, open space on the south end there that would be the town square. Now without going into a lot of detail, let me just say a few comments about scenario two mm -hmm. and how it differs because it just differs in uh, some ways, right? Um, the big difference is that, uh, uh, first of all, we call this one rural village, okay? I don't know, it's more rural, more agriculture, I guess, you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> more mm -hmm. of the tradition of, yeah. the, of the hospital. But in this case, in this scenario, as you pointed out, that, that what the senior living would be actually put into that space right where the, 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 right in the middle of right. the, of the campus, so it'd be it'd have access. I mean, that's one of the big features to it. You know that people can walk to the cultural center, walk around. You know, so they're right in the middle of the hubbub mm -hmm. of, of everything, and that's sort of one of the features of this. So, and and one of the the main differences is the location of that. Um, we still have the arts cultural center. In this case, actually, in scenario two, it's a bit bigger, mm -hmm. um, but. One of the distinguishing things is that we're, it's more focused on agriculture. You know, both uh, the fields to the north, you know, could be put into maybe farming. It was used as part of the old farm, you know. Yeah. And even the, uh, we'll get to this in a minute, but across the road, across Hospital Road to the uh, south, mm -hmm. um, you could have greenhouses or, you know, community gardens or uh, tractor sheds, you know, equipment sheds, that type of thing. So it, it would have more of that rural agricultural, you know, flavor to it. Uh, and there's some differences in the, in the numbers, but there's not a lot, really. No, so that's some of the it, distinguishing it really features. Isn't in terms of residential, yeah. Yeah. Um, let me just uh, keep going um, and just say a word about the sledding hill. Okay, so now you cross the Hospital Road, and uh, we've shown here a map of scenario one again. Mm -hmm. And we think that that's a very logical place for a, a sports and recreational facility. Now, just to be really clear about it too, we don't want to do anything that destroys the sledding hill, you know? Right, I mean, we are keeping location. the sledding hill. Right. No one has to worry about that. No, because yeah. people like to slide downhill or they like to play yeah. uh, golf frisbee or uh, yeah do all sorts of stuff. That's you know, a big part of Medfield. And just see the sunsets. Yeah, you know? it's amazingly Or ski stunning. or, uh, you know, snowshoe or whatever. You right. Know? So it's used right. for lots of stuff. But there's still quite a bit of property when you go kind of behind where that sledding hill is mm -hmm. and um, going further south where it could fit, uh, you know, a sports and recreation facility. And because it's close to McCarthy, Field or McCarthy Park. Yeah, it does make sense. Kind of makes sense, I think, to, to do it. But put it in the back there. And um, I know Parks and Rec are doing studies, you know, to right. look at the, the market for this kind of thing. And, you know, they're talking about a building of 23,000 square feet, something like that, and a outdoor, you could put more athletic fields in, you know, lacrosse or baseball, or soccer, of maybe another uh, 35,000 square feet. So you're talking about a piece of that area, not the whole thing, but a, uh, but a piece of it, and then you'd have to you know, provide for parking in that uh, area. Um, you could have an option to that, as I'd mentioned, you know, as opposed to doing that, you could make that agriculture. You know, right. After all, that's where the farm that is. That was the original? That, that was, was where they all were, right. Yeah. They had uh, Wasn't fields there a big and barn uh, and barns, yeah. cattle, and uh, orchards, apple, big apple orchard up there, and you mm -hmm. know, so, you could, ha you could try to bring that back too. So that's, I would say that's still one of these things where we're kind of debating we're it. Debating it. And the other thing with the park and recreation building, there's a permanent building committee that's also weighing in on, you know, trying to plan out for the future what buildings we need to build when. And they're looking at that as well. So. Right, right. 
Um, and then just going to the other properties that mm -hmm. I mentioned that um, are the, the Hinkley Farm, the old Hinkley Farm right. and Medfield and Ice House Road. Um, I think, you know, I think we're really converged now on what we want to do with there. And it would be affordable senior housing. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the map here under this particular scenario one is showing something like 42 units on uh, Ice House yes. Road 3, Lot 3, back, you know, we're just beyond Kingsbury. Mm -hmm. And then something like maybe 15 to 16 small cottages on the Hinkley farm and we've surveyed that so we know what kind of the wetlands are and and it'd be right next door to the Kingsbury Club so it's an ideal location. And, for that. and across from the senior center. And across from the senior center. Yeah. You know very convenient. Yeah and then connected by the Bay Circuit Trail. I think mm -hmm. we show that as this little yep. dash blue line on the map you know that uh, you could um, you know, have walks and hikes through the woods and walk over to the main campus and mm -hmm. that type of thing. Yep. So I think that's kind of gone from, something was kind of up in the air and we're kind of debating it back and forth now to something which is more, I think, uh, Agreed we're upon. coming to an agreement. I, 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 yes. Agreement upon, yeah. right. But it's catered to meet the specific, you know, interests and needs in the, in the town. And it's not, uh, you know, a big high-rise uh, apartment complex. And the needs that were stated by the community, which were senior housing, yep. you know, and uh, housing for people who are 55 and older, and maybe some millennials, yep. because it's so hard yep. for millennials to yep. move into this yep. town. So yep. I, I think one of the things smaller that housing that people are concerned about is not overloading the school system. Right. You know, the infrastructure. Yes. Of schools and stuff. So I don't think this would do it. You know, it'd be designed more for People re retiring or older people, seniors, uh, millennials maybe, mm -hmm. but not having a big, big uh, impact on the school system, right, which right. would be expensive. And then as I'd mentioned, we ha would have affordable senior housing um, on Hinkley and uh, Ice House Road. And that's really important now because of this 40B yeah. concerns in the, in the town. Reaching Safe Harbor is a big issue. And um, yeah, so that would <coughs> satisfy that. Make a, it'd make a, a good contribution to it. It wouldn't solve the whole housing 40B requirements right. from the state, but it would make a big contribution to it. It really would help out a lot. And the other thing maybe just to mention too is that uh, I think we're very interested in uh, diversity. And one of the things is to have a group home or two mm -hmm. for people with developmental disabilities. There's not really a good solution for that around here. And we could accommodate that into the hospital. So we'd have one or two what we call group homes that um, meets that need or helps meet it, at least it addresses it, and also contributes to the 40B because that'll count for 40B. So you get yeah. kind of a double, get a double benefit from right. it. And then um, the cultural and art space, you know, and I've given sort of estimates of that, but we're talking about 20,000 square feet of uh, arts and cultural space. That could be more under uh, scenario B. It was, it's more than that, so mm -hmm. it could be larger. But we've done some nice uh, architectural studies of how um, the, the Lee Chapel could be renovated yeah. and connected to the building next to it, you know. And so the Lee Chapel is, is an amazing piece of architecture. Yeah. It's a gorgeous, yeah. lovely um, building, and, and then in, inside and out. And then space, and then the other thing is space for retail and commercial and um, the sports and the athletic um, space. So I think, um, uh, I, I think, and just thinking about the scenarios now, I think we've come a long way oh, a long <laughs> over way. the last uh, right. few years and all. And I think that uh, a lot more is sort of under agreement, you know, under consensus. And we've r reached kind of a convergence. You know, I, I felt, I think for the, you know, the last six months or something, that we're really just starting to converge into a solution that meets all the needs we've heard. You or know. most of the needs. Or most you of know, them, right. I, I, You know, the intention is really to satisfy as many of the, the wants of the community as, as is possible. You know, and um, right. I think that, uh, yeah, I, I think that we have made tremendous progress. And uh, 
I think we saw that at the May 24th meeting in terms of you know, the feedback. And I can mm -hmm. try if you, you know, maybe, maybe yeah, maybe you could say a few words yeah. about the kind of what we heard basically at right. that meeting. Right. So basically, um, you know, at the, on the 24th, we had people break down into small, um, you know, the small uh, groups and discuss the two scenarios. And they had a number of ways to give their feedback. Um, and what we basically heard from them was we did hear some consensus. You know, they, you know, again, you, like you said, the 42 units uh, on lot three, um, people liked that. The small uh, homes on Hinkley, um, I think you pretty much went over those, those points. But what was most striking about our feedback was that in the past, we would hear a lot about, you know, a very a w concern that, you know, for historic preservation. You know, they were worried about the buildings. People were worried that we were going to tear them down. So we would hear that. And we would hear concern that, you know, we need to do something towards our 40B safe harbor. That was another big concern. And also high density. People did not want high density. And I think that's why the DCAM, I mean, this is my opinion, the DCAM one failed because right. people just 400 units or 400 plus were just not what they wanted. So high density was an issue and um, also increases in the school budget. So those were the things we heard over and over and over again. But at this meeting on May 24th, we didn't hear that. Mm -hmm. So um, Kerry Hewlett made a wonderful point about all of that. She is our, one of our consultants from the Consensus Building Institute. We didn't hear it because these scenarios um, have taken those concerns into consideration. And you know, we've addressed those concerns right. Right. in the scenarios. Um, I think what we're hearing now, or what we heard on the 24th, are more concerns about, I mean, people are looking for financials, and we're, we are planning on getting the financial information to them. Um, there was a little concern about, oh, do I have to choose between one and two? No. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, probably the end product is going to be kind of a, um, a meld, right. a melding of, of these two right. um, options. And the other thing is, we were hearing a lot about, like, where will I park? <laughs> you know, where will I park? Important consideration. <laughs> yeah. You know, how will I get in and out? Right. You know, access. Access. Um, where will people shop? So people were really, and this is another point Carrie made, people are envisioning themselves living, working, visiting. Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So they've yeah. moved, you know, we, we've all progressed. The community, the committee, we have all progressed to this convergent point where, you know, where, you know, we can see, we can see the, the, en the end of the tunnel. You know, we can see what might be up there, you know, this on this amazing piece of property. Yeah, and I we think we, we can see it with the beautiful buildings, the, mm. you know, preserving the architectural, you know, attractiveness of the buildings and of the way the campus is actually laid out. Not destroying that, no. but keeping it, but bringing it up to uses for, you know, our century, basically, and our future centuries, and that's important. The layout is historic. Right. The layout was so well thought out. Yeah, and the river, you know, looking oh. out over the Charles and in the, the back. Vistas. And the vistas. And it was, it was all part of the plan. Yeah. Um, so to, to bring that forward into this century and beyond um, mm -hmm. will be a good thing. You have just watched one of five edited videos from past episodes of our town, our land, our future. We want to let you know that you can look forward to two brand new videos. The first one will talk about the rationale and the benefits of the final plan. 
The second, we'll talk about what you can expect at special town meetings. For instance, you'll be voting on the zoning that will support the, the plan. As a way to stay in touch and informed as to what the master planning committee is doing uh, in this final stage, you can go to our Facebook page, we have a Twitter account, and we have a newsletter that goes out every week. So you can sign up for that um, through our Facebook or our website. Our website, www.mshvision.net, um, is a good resource. We hope you've enjoyed these, this video and uh, the other videos in the series. Thank you.